Pearly clouds, pearly gates, they say. They don't know much about astronomy, I say. The science of light on high, of all that is far off and dark and stuck, stuck in the deepest dark of space. Dark, but for billions and billions of exceptions. And I insist on the exceptional. You know this, and you're avoiding it, and you've been caught. I haven't been caught. I've been attacked. With love? With pinches. What kind of world is this? You're not wearing your hearing aid. You're fair game. Church, now. I can't right now. Oh, yes, you can. We're waiting. I am freezing. Come in. Margie, I'm sorry, but I cannot sit still right now. <coughs> All you have to do when church is sit still. Now. Tell me what's going on, or come inside. I've been trying to tell you all week, but you're busy and you're barking. I don't bark. I'm running the house, and Daddy's running the church, and you. What are you doing? Staying up all night, in the cold, like a mop? What is wrong with you this morning, Miss Jump? I'm not jumping. I'm not a mop. Why are we still outside? Because they have a job for me at Harvard, at the observatory, actual astronomy. Since when were you even looking for a job? Since they offered. Margie, this is an extraordinary thing. They need mathematicians, and they asked me specifically. Harvard asked you? Yes, and please don't hold back your tone of shock. This is shocking. I'm shocked. And I'm leaving. I'm taking the job, and I'm leaving. You've always been leaving. Next week. Next? Oh, can we wait? We need to discuss this as a family. Margie, this could be my best life, and it's right in front of me. And I'm still freezing. Margie, talk to me. All right. Yes. I know that we were never going to be world next to each other kind of sisters. And the way you drive me crazy makes that for the best. But Henrietta, this is extreme. Exactly. Come with me. Wait, what? Both of us, come on. What are you talking about? That's absurd. Only a little. You're the only person who understands me, and you're always up for an adventure, and I do want to get old and scrappy with you. I did not say scrappy. You should come with me and fire up your heart. What are you talking about? The edge of the wide world. It's Boston. A blaze of learning. A blaze? A blaze. And Radcliffe is nearby. They have music school. Henry, slow down. You don't have to stay here. You can be happy. You can loose yourself. Loose my Henry, stop. Do not start wearing bloomers. Margie. Wait. There are women these days, and they wear pants. And it's ridiculous. Now, I have to play the hymns for the service that started ten minutes ago. And thank you, sister. My fingers are numb. I need you to convince Daddy to give me my dowry. I'm serious. Very. Please talk to him. Why do I get all the yelling draws? You're so good at it. <laughs> This is your future, Henrietta. You know for certain that you'll never marry, never fall in love. People do that. Uncoordinated, unplanned emotion. Just the word spinster. Henrietta, please. I need to start my life with Daddy's money. Next, the bloomers. Whiskey, suffragettes. I'm not a cowboy. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about astronomy. You keep talking about terrible pants. It starts with pants. <laughs> it's a changing world, and some things should remain sacred. And I'm not saying you shouldn't go, but I worry. It's far away, that place, and it's crowded, and you're here in my sight, and I worry. I'll be doing math. Don't worry. Why not stay here and live with us and teach? No. Like every other girl with your temperament. I like my temperament, and I don't want it stuffed in a schoolhouse. I have questions. I have fundamental problems with the state of human knowledge. Who are we? Why are we? Where are we? Wisconsin. In the universe. Still Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm not just curious. I have charged and poisoned. You know that I'll just get more and more annoying until I go. You know this. You know this. One day, there will be a word for you. Just for me. For our father, who only after much snorting will approve of this. When you go, take a Bible. I think Harvard has 
suppose. You know what I mean. We look in the same direction, but our understanding is distinct. I love you. It's too cold for God. That's why we keep him inside. Why don't you go with me? I can't. Why not? Because Father counts on me. And if you leave, I can't leave. And I don't want to leave. And Samuel proposed. What? To Mary. Who? Henry. I mean, when? This morning, thank you for noticing. Aha, jumpy. Yes, other people's lives are also in progress. <laughs> Inside, looking very attentive until the service ends, and I answer. What's your answer? Of course I will. To Samuel? Well, I wanted to talk to you first. You leave me for Samuel? You just said you're leaving me! Not for Samuel! <laughs> He's very good. Yeah. Yes, he is. He is. And I'm happy. Then I am too. Come with me. Just come back. And so. I go. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which you offer, O land around the skies, who will you be replaced? It's not that complicated. May I just say how pleased I am to meet you, Dr. Pickering? I am so honored. No. I'm not. I'm not. You're not Dr. Pickering. I am. You are Dr. Pickering. So, sorry. My name is Peter Shaw. I work for Pickering. Oh, lovely. Mr. Shaw. Nice to meet you, colleagues, then. You actually work for me. And I work for him. So. So, we're still colleagues, it would seem. Technically, yes, but... And here I thought Harvard was such a technical place! No, I just mean that... I mean, of course it is, it's just... You see, I'm Dr. Pickering's apprentice, junior fellow in astronomical research, summa cum laude, mathematics, and physics. And if you spot me, I'll swoon. What? It's a technical term! Now, Mr. Shaw, I've come a long way, and I'm quite anxious to get started. May I? Hmm? Get started? Or just point me to the telescope and I'll be fine. The telescope? Is that it? The Great Refractor? Yes, but... One of the largest in the world. I am very aware. Quite a point of pride for us. But this is the work of a few girls to work. In here. A uh, short orientation, then. We bring the girls' department photographic plates from the telescope. Latest technology. Yes, good. Question. Wild women? Oh, this is great. Dr. Pickering got fed up with the voice he was sent, and he said that he really said this. That his housekeeper could do better. So we hired her. And she did better. Now it's quite a woman's world up here. I was expecting the usual world. Oh, I meant regular rounds. Rounds? I come around. To what end? <laughs> Evaluation. Course. Mr. Shaw, I also graduated summa cum laude from Radcliffe, which is basically Harvard in skirts, and lucky for us, the universe doesn't much care what you wear. So, my expertise and yours might just complement each other's if we can get past this encroachingly unpleasant first impression. Or I could take this out and you could keep orientating. Well, you'll fit right in the harem. The what? Oh, no, no, it's just name. A joke. Pickering's harem, it's a compliment. If you're a concubine! He picks the best is what we mean. We could call you that. Pickering's best. Pickering's picks? That's got a ring. You don't. I was supposed to meet Dr. Pickering at ten. Yes, yes. And he sends his warmest welcome through me, whose team, more important, 
not important. Pressing. More pressing matters. I'll show you around. I'll come back. There's no need for that. I prefer to speak directly to the head of the department. Miss Levin. Mr. Shaw! I don't mean to be brisk. Maybe a little if that would drive on the point that I'm finally here. After a long time not being anywhere. And I'd really like to get started. And all you've thus far conveyed is that I'm in some kind of math harem waiting to be picked. And that doesn't sound right at all. I am so sorry. And Dr. Pickering is thrilled to have you here. And I would get in a lot of trouble with him if I ran you off on your first day. So please stay. We'd very much like you to stay. You don't sound very excited about all this work. Well, it is work. It's not your how best to make you uncomfortable. Passion? That's a bit excessive for physics. Is it? I find the very notion of this work to be a thrill, a bracing excitement. And it's just something you do? Well, I enjoy the work. Of course I do. It's interesting and reasoned and sound. And my father pulled a lot of strings. Why did you say passion? Unlike for some people, following this curiosity was not easy. I had to insist, which requires a dedicated desire unmatched by reason, which is called passion. You should try it. I sing Gilbert and Sullivan. I want to be an actor, but Dad thought not. I still sing on occasion with enthusiasm. Does that count? Technically. Well. Here we go, one of the star plates we'll be working with. A uh, slice of heaven. Beautiful, I should take one to my father. Excuse me. He's a pastor. Please never leave the premises. You said heaven, I was joking. Harvard property. Of course. Very expensive. And if you don't mention the attempted larceny, I won't mention the musicals. You're curious. In every way. And Dr. Pickering oh, still won't get us new chairs. Watch out for the, watch out for the plumbing. He's got a stock. Swift and angry. Oh, and my. Miss Cannon, don't get in her way. Her name is the Cannon. But I'd like to ask well, about you. I mentioned key, delicacy in the plate, they crash. Mr. Shaw. Come pass that sound. I would love a chance It's good money for women's work. It's volunteering. What are you asking, Miss Levin? That I might more fully engage in the ideas here? Other than doing the work that you've been hired to do? Other than, pardon me, do your math. Now, when may I use the telescope? Well, you can't. I'll take over, Mr. Shaw. Yes, very good. Start to brief her. <laughs> and I'd be brief. Yes. Good day, ladies. I'll see you around. Welcome, Miss Lovett. Thank you. Hello. I was so excited to be here that I fear I might have scared him. Easy to do. Willoughby of Lovett, I like you. <laughs> you! Annie Cannon, I haven't decided. Oh, Miss Cannon, I know that I probably shouldn't have gone on like that with him. No, you shouldn't. And I'm sorry if I made a Harvard firm Harvard Observatory is the pinnacle of the astronomical community. The academic world looks to us to bookkeep the stars if you talk to Mr. Shaw, which is why we try not to talk to Mr. Shaw. <laughs> we are mapping the sky, Miss Levitt. If doing what has never been done before sounds unimportant to you, uninspired, I'd leave before you were asked to. Otherwise, show some respect. Of course, and I would respect never- Respect is a quiet thing, Miss Levitt. Practice this. Yes, Miss Cannon. Practice now. Let me show you what we do here, Miss Levitt. This is the latest technology, a photograph of the stars. And we chart every point of light on every one. Every single one. Every scattered sneeze of them. Will, don't be crude. They look like ground pepper till you get the hang of it. Wilhelmina is our best photometer, from whom you'll learn much if she doesn't get herself fired. I used to be her boss. You still are. We share leadership of this department. She outdid me with those letters. I didn't know such thing. The star classifications were her idea. A collective effort, I assure you. Star classifications? That's your work? Oh, yes, indeed. The sky was a riot until Miss Cannon coded it. I wanted to give every star a number based on color, but she insisted on labeling the stars with letters based on temperature. Lady! O-B-A-F-G-K-M! Yes. You created a standard, Miss Cannon. My goodness, I'm so honored. I'm sure you'd laugh, but my professors made us memorize your letters using this ridiculous phrase. She also made up that ridiculous <laughs> phrase. But I did not mean for it to find its way into textbooks. Oh, be a fine girl. Kiss me. You, may you did that too? She had a muse. Uh, Miss Fleming. She thought it would be best for the boys. That's all they think about anyways. Let's get back to work, please. <laughs> because she's the boss. So I wouldn't have to be if you take this seriously, which is a ridiculous request to make of the woman who started this department. 
Did you know that Will was the first woman to hold the title curator in astronomy? And the Draper catalog is all her work. She's discovered stars and nebulae, novae. She's the reason that I'm here. And even if she is far too much fun, I am the first to admit that she is fundamental to this institution. And that, new friend, is how you introduce yourself without boasting. <laughs> I quit. Oh, be a fine grandma. It's a great phrase. We have work to do. And Dr. Pickering is a very particular man. He calls us his harem. He's joking. He's not. <laughs> he measures a project in girl hours. He's joking. He's not. <laughs> Sometimes kilo girl hours. <laughs> the point is, we're busy because we're essential. We're the dirt from which mighty oaks grow. And do we have a title of some sort? We do indeed. Congratulations, Miss Levitt. You are now a computer. What's a computer? One who computes. Notate the plates, transfer the data, input the data, process, record, next star. And the plates, how do I read them? Star spanking. Align the spanker with a star. The matching dot indicates how bright that star is. Record 92 position date and repeat until you fill up the logbook. Or go slightly crazy. And what about working on our own ideas? Using the telescope for our own work? You don't. Oh, but I thought- We was... collect, report, and maintain the largest stellar archive in the world. And we resist the temptation to analyze it. But you just said how much you discovered here, both of you. Resisting doesn't always work. Can you do this job, Miss Levitt? Of course I can. I need the consistent, not the creative. She can do it, Annie. She understands. Good. Please show Miss Levitt to her station. Will do, Mr. President. You make me crazy, and you know you make me crazy. Balance of power, darling. <laughs> All right, you. More questions? Is she mean or just to me? Oh, no, no. She's just meticulous and blunt. And she sings. Sings what? Like a crow. <laughs> but still, shows her humanity a total, though it may be. You want her on your side. She's always on the right one. Good, because I have some pressing issues with science. The whole of it? A lot of it. As far as I can tell, we do not appear to know where we are, astronomically. Which is shocking. This is the modern age. We've been looking up for millennia, and we don't know how far away those stars are. We don't know if the Milky Way is the universe. That's just unacceptable. You're fun. But here's some perspective. I was Pickering's housekeeper before he brought me here. So we're a lot of things, but at present we are cleaning up the universe for the men. And making fun of them behind their backs. It's worked for centuries. Working isn't talking. Here we like to say, the sky's the limit. And there's so damn much of it. And so we work. Star name. Star name. Star name. Alpha Leonis 39H2. Beta Orionis 1713. 95 degrees declination. 73 degrees. 50 degrees. Spectral class B. Spectral class B. Magnitude 1.25. Magnitude 0.65. Henrietta, we miss you. Star name. And I can't stand the conversation since you left. Alpha Andromeda 15. Everyone is so sensible. 80 degrees declination. Please write back. Uh-huh. 33 right ascension. Morning, ladies. Correct on both counts, Mr. Shaw. Good morning, Mr. Shaw. Back again. And so soon. Just passing by. Dropping these off. Picking these up. Spectral class A. Hello, Miss Levitt. Magnitude 2 point... What? Oh. Hello, Mr. Shaw. How are you today? Good. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> He's an odd one. And getting odder. Star name! Star name! Star name! Henry, wish you'd be here for Thanksgiving. Daddy's planning a marvelous sermon on family. Uh-huh. Magnitude 2.8. You missed the news. Star name? I'm pregnant. Oh, Margie. Oh, my goodness. I think Daddy's happier than I am. 
And think of it, you're going to be an aunt. I'm going to be an aunt, and you a mother. Congratulations, Margie. That's I am starting Alpha Cygnus, spectral class A. Hello, hello. Here I come, coming around. A lot nowadays. <laughs> What's going on? I just want to make sure she's everyone. Oriented. It's been half a year now. I think she could find the bathroom. Am I doing something wrong, Mr. Shaw? No, no, of course not. I'm just curious. Uh huh. About the data. Oh, yes, he's dreaming about the data. <laughs> We're a bit busy today, Mr. Shaw, unless you have a message for the room. Oh, yes. Dr. Pickering and I want Miss Levitt's opinion on something of great interest. If I may steal a moment. You may borrow Miss Levitt. Not steal her. Of course. <laughs> Just an expression. Was it? I'm so glad Dr. Pickering values my opinion. I didn't know he noticed me at all. He did. And does. I was... We were wondering if you could explain what sort of phenomenon this might be. I haven't seen anything like that on the replacement part of you. That, that you might offer some clarity. Well, Mr. Shaw, that's definitely a scratch. Is it? <laughs> I'm guessing someone's pocket watch or perhaps a belt buckle. A scratch? We can name it after you if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> no need. Glad it's cleared up. Time to go. Yes, indeed. Thank you for asking, Mr. Shaw. We're always here if you need us. Henrietta, 32 degrees. Will we see you for Easter? Magnitude, 6.2. Daddy's asking for you. Spectral class B. And I'd love to have you home. 45. Henrietta is. Magnitude. Henrietta! What? Yes, what? I have a son. Oh, oh, Margie. His name is Michael. You have a son. You should meet him. I should, I will. How did this happen already? It's April. Oh my, is it? It is. Henrietta, let me tell you, babies are remarkable. I'm sure, but I'm sorry, I'm just so busy. Too busy for me? Too busy for me at the moment. Can't you come home? There are a lot of stars out there. But you'd be so proud, I found my calling. Uh-huh. I will compose. Music, how nice. When the baby's down and everything's clean, it's just me and the piano. That's great. It's not a hobby. I have to work. It's very exciting. It is. And I'm sorry I can't come home, and I'm sure I'm letting you down, but I've got this work, and you've got yours, and I can't play house with you right now. I don't like this mood. I promise I'll come home. You won't. You're hardening in some urban office, and it's making you flinty. Margie, stop. I know there's more to life than that. The nature? Than math. There's more out there. Then why do you stay so close to home? Why do you excel at every ordinary thing and then chastise me about what else is out there? I specialize in what's out there. And let me tell you that out there does not happen on a farm. Check the post. Father sent a book. Oh no, a Bible? If it were a Bible, I would have said Bible. It's a book. On what? Miss Levitt? I don't know, Henrietta. I've got this life, you've got yours. Round and round we go. Mr. Shaw. Ladies of the logbook. By God, you better have a supernova on those plates. You know he's here for you. What? Nothing that exciting. I was just hoping to speak to Miss Levitt. Mr. Shaw? The work she's, you're all doing is just, well, I find it bracing. And I find it hard to work with such interruptions if you don't mind. I'm sorry, I can come back later. No! Oh, on my round. Mr. Shaw! There is an inverse relationship between time lost on your rounds and the life of my overqualified staff, any one of whom you may speak to after work. So come in or stay out, but you must have a reason to be here or cease coming around! See you tomorrow. <laughs> Sweet boy, I'm going to shoot him. <laughs> you see what I mean about him? He never thought we were bracing before. Can we talk about anything else, please? Miss Cannon, help! Just so we're all clear, he fancies you. I don't care! I barely know him! I don't know him! We just, we work! He comes around. Like a hungry cat. Who's the cat? Am I the cat? You're not the cat. I 
better not be. I mean, my goodness, I wouldn't even know where to begin. He'd be happy to help you with that. Work, ladies. I don't know. I kind of like him. He wouldn't be bad to marry. And you marry him. Oh, he's not my type. Whomever's type he is, I couldn't work if I were married, and that is not an option. So my husband would have to be quite the advanced creature to handle that, and I'm not sure our Mr. Shaw fits that bill. Agree. Although I do admire his persistence. And gait. He has a nice gait. Meow, meow. Would you heal? The point is that, like you, my work is my life. And that's just fine with me. And excuse me for saying this, Miss Cannon, but these Mr. Shaws, they all come around. They need this work. They need you. Why don't you demand a faculty position? Because I don't need a title to do the work. But the boys need your work to keep their titles. And eventually one of us has to be a, what was it? Mighty Oak. Mighty Oak! You deserve it! Neither of you are getting a raise, and that's fine. I don't want a raise. I do! I want a model! <laughs> Miss Cannon, if they won't give you what you deserve, they're never going to give it to any of us. What do you want them to give you? A chance to show them what we can do! Which means what? I'm seeing things. Which means what? I'm spotting more and more of the blinking stars, the variables. I'm working on the small Magellanic clouds, and I'm tracking these stars that pulse. Cepheid stars. I think so. Some of them blink once a week, some take them up. The fact that Cepheid's pulse is not new. I know. It's the amount of them. The large amount I'm finding. Actually, they're quite rare to find. Not if you're doing it right. Continue. I put together a simple comparative that lets me analyze the plates quickly. The same star field at different times, and you can see that some of the stars are much brighter. And I've seen them in most of the plates. Now, if these are true Cepheids, and if there are as many of them as I'm starting to see, it could be a big clue. To what? I don't know, but it's got to be important. No, it doesn't. But my instincts are telling Dr. me that- Dr. Pickering does not pay for those instincts. He doesn't really pay me at all. Then do the work you're assigned, or don't work. You may, however, stay after hours if you'd like, Miss Levitt. What? If you're quiet. Really? Really? Only rule was quiet. Understood. <laughs> Thank you. Daddy was wondering if you'd received the book, or if you'll come home for Christmas. Right back. Dear Margie, sorry we fought. Here's a book for Michael from his favorite aunt. Could you send sweaters? Love, H. For the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child. Going on 
in the world. Aww. We are in an age of defiance. I mean, defying and upturning it all. All the ideas we held, all the things we knew for certain. Fundamentals, even. Distance, light, time. You read that paper, didn't you? You read it? Relativity! Relativity! It's impossible! Except that it's not. Time is elastic, space is part of time. It's ridiculous. Doesn't make it wrong. No, no, no. The idea that there could be galaxies as big as ours, outside of ours, that the universe is that large? No. The theory seems to suggest it. But it makes it all undone, untethered. In the history of human thought, there was a steady progression of ideas. Unless you're Catholic. Standing on the shoulders of giants is what I mean. I don't know. There's a lot of stupid giants. But we're modern. The modern age. Building up. Building on top of other stately ideas. Sensible. Yes. Physics was about wrapped up. Yes. But then that fuzzy-headed man blew up your stately foundation. You're not supposed to do that to Isaac Newton. <laughs> <laughs> what do we grasp? And how? And until what point when it all shifts, anyways? I'm not sure what you're looking to hear, Mr. Shaw. She found something. Is finding, uncovering, discovering, and I don't know what that's like. Which makes me think that I might not be very good at this, and that it all might just be too... strange. You don't usually talk this much when you come up here. I don't? I do. Rounds. I come around. Ah, uh, yes, the life-affirming rounds. <laughs> I'm just doing my job, trying to. And you know why she's got something? Because she's not just doing hers. Because she knows she's not getting anything handed to her except the corner of someone else's chance. Because we can't use that apparently hypersexed telescope you boys get to, but the mind is sexless and so is the sky. Are you made nervous by how many times I've said the word sex? Somewhat. Oh, good. <laughs> just... I admire what you all do. It's precision. Thank you. <laughs> what was that? Wonder me incompetence. You see why we keep him around. Is it wrong that I like him a wee bit more because of that? Because I quite enjoyed that little fluster. Speaking of, has he proposed yet? What? What? Wilhelmina! To me? No! What? No! He always seems like he's going to. <laughs> <laughs> that face he makes. Pinchy. Pinchy? Who's Pinchy? No, we've talked about this. Mary? You're not married. You're not married. Nobody's married. Why is this an issue? It's not an issue. Not unless you admit it, prove me right, and live happily ever after. Oh, God. <laughs> Our only power is ignoring her. I'm not laughing at you. I'm not. Love makes us all look a bit stupid. Oh, Pinchy. Is Pinchy good or bad? It's all terribly relative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Henrietta. It's just life. Ridiculous and miraculous and often not funny at all. But better when you're laughing. Especially husbands. She had one. You did? I did. Abandoned me as soon as we docked in Boston. I was 21, pregnant, and poor. So I laughed. Found my way to Dr. Pickering's. Worked his house as a maid. He brought me here, and here I sit. So I laugh, because that seemed to work. <laughs> Time to breathe. Of course. 
You certainly have a knack for finding them. But I'm finding that finding them isn't really worth much if they don't mean anything. And right now they don't. They might. I'm going on 2,000 of them. And I'm starting to think it's like counting grass. You can count it, but why? <laughs> I do know the feeling. Show me what you found. The left side is a list of Cepheids arranged by fastest period of brightness. The middle column is their spectral class, but I think I need to change it to luminosity because I'm not coming up with anything. There's no pattern. No, there's not. I've wasted so much time on this. Miss Levitt. I really thought I could feel something in the numbers, really sense there was something important we were connecting. But no! Miss Levitt. Twelve notebooks packed, staring at me, loose ends, all loose, and nothing to show, and no meaning, and nothing, nothing makes any damn sense! Henrietta! Excuse my language. You're close. Keep working. Think about how you're thinking. It's in there. Should I ask Dr. Pickering? No. Mr. Shaw? Oh, no! <laughs> this one's yours. Thank you. Miss Lovett, I think you might be in the middle of it. Of what? That chance. Actually, I prefer it, much prefer it, if you call me my Peter, my given name. It would be nicer, nice. Oh, Henrietta. Good. Found my gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Henrietta, I don't know much about you, really, and, and that's a shame. So, might I know something about you? Now, it would be nice. Oh, uh, I grew up in Lancaster, family in Wisconsin, my hearing is not great, and I used my dowry to get here, which is why I'm a bit zealous about all this. Uh. And I play the clarinet, not well. I play also, also not well. Then we can be terrible together! I, I mean, that's not what I mean, I have a habit of flirting. And I have a dachshund, named Carl, oh. which is fun. <laughs> Carl waits. Sorry, <laughs> I think that you might be quite marvelous. I think that often. Oh, that is not standard. <laughs> <laughs> There's an ocean liner leaving tomorrow. You should be on it. I'll be on it. I'm saying come with me to Europe for a month or two. You don't have to decide now, but Close now because the liner leaves tomorrow. <laughs> I said that. Act warmly, hold a night. We might stop in Spain, and there's dancing and lobsters and water and moonlight and bobbing around, and that's romantic. Or sickening. Either way, there will be an eclipse, which is fun. I. Oh my, yes, that sounds very interesting. Interesting? Incredible! Oh, good. If it weren't on a boat. You don't like boats? I didn't think of that. No, I just can't leave my work. I'm very close to something. I the ladies can't manage? Not this work, no. It's my findings, and I've worked so hard, and I... You don't have to leave it. We can pack them. You, and me, and work. <laughs> they crack. So they'll be here when we get back. I'm too close to leave. I'm so close. But we could meet astronomers all over Europe. Talk about your ideas. See the world. That sounds marvelous, but why don't we just go to dinner? Because you're always up here. But I can't go to Europe. Henrietta. Peter. This is a rather large moment for me, so I just want to be very clear, because it took me three years to get this far. So, <laughs> your mind and spirit, I quite adore those things about you. And I don't expect to reciprocate immediately, if at all, but I feared 
combusting if I didn't tell you they've been the brightest object in my day since we met. And we work with stars. And I know I haven't been the most emotive suitor, but I have been a thoughtful one, and I hope that counts for something. And I also hope that I do not offend you if I tell you how deeply I admire you. Well, I think it's an accurate statement to say that I approve. You do? That's just tremendous. And a bit shocking. I thought I might have ruined it with that first impression. Or the second one. <laughs> or this one. <laughs> My work is very important to me, and if there is any resistance to that, then you may reconsider your adoration promptly. I couldn't reconsider if I tried. I know you, and I know your work, and if you can't come with me, I'll stay, because I cannot walk away with this. What is this, exactly? Well, it's, it's love, right? I don't know, is it? It's gotta be. My heart's being like a train, that's your fault. My <laughs> fault? It's your fault! Yes! See? <laughs> love. Oh God, how do you know that? Comparative analysis. Before you, content. After you, passionate. Confident. Idiot. Browns, weeds. An ocean liner just to be with you in the widest world. And finally I tell you, and finally you hear, and finally, of our mutual compatibility. <laughs> Either the storm of Wilhelmina's laughter at our expense. I imagine it'll be thunderous. I'm certain of it. So, you leave for a while and I leave for a while. It's just space. And time. Which leaves us... Afar, but not apart. Afar, but not apart. I like that. Wouldn't know that I made you up for him. I wrote letters for you from 
you brought them into the house every week. So excited, thrilled, read them to the whole family. Look what we got from Henrietta today. Oh, Daddy, she says hello. She says she loves you. Thank you. On and on. Such a comforting fiction. You didn't have to do that. I did. So that you could have a home to come back to. Margie, uh, please. I am so busy. He'll need to be fed. The doctor's coming in an hour. This is suddenly a lot of work. And I'm quite sure you'll be leaving any moment, so I better not get comfortable. Margie, please stop. Please. Help me. I am not leaving. However long you need me, I will not go. But your word is portable. They can send more, and I can stay here. I want to. I do. I do. It's been so much. Too much. I see that, and I'm so sorry. He was fine. And then not. And now everything changes. Why does everything change? Not changes, just changes form. What? There's a new theory, a German physicist. Oh, oh wait. God. He says that mass and energy are just different forms of the same thing. They shift back and forth forever. So nothing's gone. It just shifts. Why don't you practice for Sunday? I'll find Sam and see if I can help. Dear Dr. Pickering, Miss Fleming, Miss Cannon, due to family needs, I must remain here. Send more sky. Dear Peter, I imagine you on the sea, night brilliant with stars. Instead, I spend the nights just as I did as a child, alone in the yard, looking up, dreaming of another life. Yours, Henrietta. Dear Henrietta, Landed in England, eclipse was stunning. You are everywhere, afar but not apart, Peter. Peter, it's hard not to feel like I've gone backwards, but it's good that I'm here. Father's not improving, and Margie is so glad to have me, but I do miss everything. Henrietta. Henrietta. Met the most brilliant men at Oxford. Everyone discussing how to <laughs> Paris was great, Zurich was cold. How are things at Harvard? Peter. Peter, I haven't yet returned, but once I help Margie, I intend to make my way back to my perfectly creaky desk. And your rounds, Henrietta. Henrietta. Just arrived in Cambridge, and I have so much to tell you. When will you return? Peter. Peter, I promise I'm coming as soon as I can. But when will that be? We do now. Please send more plates. I don't care about the plates. Where are you? The same place. Afar, but not apart. Peter? Father's funeral was brief but full of friends, which was good for the family. It's been so long since I've heard from you. I fear my letters have gotten lost. Or you have, Henrietta. Miss Levitt, I'm very sorry to hear of your father's passing. Harvard's very busy. Dr. Pickering's setting more plates for analysis, if you can manage. Of course I can manage, and I'll be coming back soon. Of course you will. I just wish...
don't look excited. I'm not being nice. I just can't stand all of these boxes in my house. <laughs> Why are you so good to me? Because I'm a saint, and you're easy to pity. I accept <laughs> that. Can I take your son with me? He knows three whole constellations. Yes, boys and glassware is a good idea. It amazes me that the entire sky fits on these little window panes. And how shockingly full it all is. It doesn't look that full from the backyard, but each one is just posting with stars. And nebulae. There and there. My goodness. It's a whole other world up there. Or world. <coughs> you know they call me a fiend? Who calls you a fiend? A star-finding fiend. One of the most prominent astronomers at Princeton said that about me. You're important to them? I am, actually. And they're not taking advantage of you? Oh, they surely are, but it's a compliment. A love letter is a compliment. We've talked about this. Sitting at Harvard and you can't find a gentleman. My department is all women. Then get out. It's complicated. Wouldn't be romance without. Is it? What? Romance? No, not yet. Who is this not yet? What about your music? What about your secret fancy? Margie, it's nothing. It's a boring story with a boring ending. Why? Because it ended! Or didn't really start. It's unclear. I'm sorry. That was never on my plan anyway. Maybe it's your plan that's boring. Oh, just play something, would you? You can't distract me with my own music. It's not a distraction, it's a celebration! That you're leaving me again? I've been hearing bits and pieces for months now. I want to hear the whole of it before I go. Well, I have been working on something tiny. Just a sketch. A hymn? A concerto. Really? I'm working on a symphony. <coughs> oh, goodness, I guess I thought to write a whole symphony, I thought you had to be male, European, and angry. <laughs> I guess upsetting tradition might just run in the family.
on it. It really is, isn't it? Checking on the children. Tucked in, but wide awake. Tell me more. Are you tempting me with astronomy? That is my greatest asset. And you would remember from school. You're cheap. You're net. Pay attention, young man. Stars are classified by their heat. Your eyes. My God. And given one of the letters O, B, A, F, G, K, M. And how will I ever remember? I wish there were some phrase. Perhaps on an irresistible directive. Oh, be a fine girl, kiss. Now I remember. Let's stay here forever. A drift. A float. In the sea. In the sky. Always the sky. Always. Yes. The sky. Yes. Send more sky. What? Peter? Yes? Oh, Miss Lovett. Hello. Hello! You're here. I am. Very here. Yes, well, welcome back. And I'm so glad to read about your work. The pattern. It's very good work. It took long enough to find, but in the end it's a compliment to all of us. It's kind of you to share the credit, but I seem to recall you working all those nights alone. Usually, yes. I'm sorry, I should be going. Welcome back, and we'll need your next batch soon. Batch of... Those little settings? For the theme. Oh, well, yes, but I... Dickering will be glad to have a rescue theater back in the house. Good day. Wait! I really can't talk, Miss Lovett. But I haven't seen the publication yet, and I was hoping to move past computing to real research. I'll let you discuss it with Dr. Pickering. Excuse me, I have a class. You're teaching! How nice! It is a university. Here. Miss Lovett, please don't. Don't what? I can't. I'm sorry. I thought we could. Miss Levitt, I cannot talk right now. I'm sorry. I know it's been so long. It has. I couldn't come back right away. I tried. I did, but there were complications. Years of complications? I'm sorry. We shouldn't be. I should go. Peter! Excuse me. You stopped writing to me. Well, there were complications. And space and time, yes, I know. But when I saw the truth in those numbers, when I finally felt that thing I've always wanted to feel, I thought of you. Because you understand. I thought. You know, there should be mandatory exclamation points with this sort of thing. I saw you coming up the path and about bit my fist, I was so pleased. Hello, darling. Here you go. The period luminosity relation by Miss Henrietta Levitt. Blah, 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 ah. There is a simple relation between the brightness of the Cepheid stars and their time periods. Ha! Published and triumphant you stand. In case those were worry lines. Why don't you tell her it's brilliant? It is an achievement, especially now that Dr. Pickering and the lot have their hands on it. The lot have nothing to do with it. I'm just saying. When others have a chance to apply it, progress indeed. You would know progress if it swam up and bit your ear. Excuse me? I don't blame you for being jealous. I'm not jealous. And I'm not standing right in front of you. I'd like to ask Dr. Pickering if I might continue working on this now that I'm back. Perhaps start a project just for the Sepians. We already started one. You what? But I want to participate. You're not an astronomer. Of course I am. Not without a degree. Then I'll get one. And who will do your work? This is my work. It's not. My work. Not anymore. Peter. Miss Levitt, you've done a good job. Let's let that be that. No, the impact of this could, it could change the very foundation. It's just a pattern, Miss Levitt. It's not some sort of revolution. Though we, of course, thank you for your contribution. You are a giant ass. <laughs> I'm sorry I raised my voice. Why don't you get out? I will not. Do not press me. After all I put up with from this department, where's Miss Cannon, hmm? Gone again. She's sick of you. We all know where she is. She's out, making trouble for this institution. And if you ever made as many contributions as she makes trouble in one day, any one of us would care what you think about any one of us. I'll go. Home to your dachshund? To my wife. That's ruined.
Dr. Pickering is finally getting us new chairs. That's, that's very... Darling, we are in the business of perspective. You know that it's fundamentally hard to tell if something is big and bright or just close by. I don't know what you mean. And if hearts were stars, we'd all connect with the damn dots. Oh, nothing ever materialized. Not saying it did. Just hearts and stars can be blinded. How do we know that any of this matters? How does anyone know that? I want to know that. You can't. Which is why you must never doubt, or you'll drown. Now, Annie will be so happy to see you. See, she's on her way back from a protest. Very exciting these days. And they gave her a sash. She loves that sash. Both of them are off to change the nation. Speaking of, look who's back, Annie. Miss Lovett. Miss Cannon. Here you are. Welcome. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh. And you, my dear. The responses to your findings have been numerous. It was in there. You were right. Then let's all never doubt me again, shall we? <laughs> See? How goes the march? I defended your honor. It was profound and pointless, as these things tend to be. And the sash? Patriot thread. So, you're back for good, I hope. Can we get you started on something new, then? How do you feel about supernovae? Miss Cannon, I'd much rather continue with the Cepheids. Keep working with them. Follow it through. Through to where? To some true place. Put a big red X on it if you find it. If we're not finding the largest truth, then what have we spent our lives doing? What's the point of all this? The cosmic question of our age. What is the point? What is the universe? The question itself emits a singularity of size. We, we are stuck on this planet. In this life. And our, our perspective, perspective is intimate. Imperfect. Which means that I might have forgotten However, to live. However, because we lack the measurements, we are left wondering, how big is everything? Which leads to the central question, is everything contained within our Milky Way galaxy or not? Are we contained or not? Is, is all, all that, that we see the extent of the universe? The extent? No! No! Absolutely. It is my judgment that the universe is exactly the same thing as the Milky Way galaxy. There is nothing greater and nowhere else. How could there be? To even consider it will mean that these stars are thousands of light years away, and nothing is thousands of light years away. The universe is simply not that vast. Nor need it be to inspire the deepest human wonder. Thank you. Professor Shaw! Miss Levitt, you were watching. How could you say that the universe isn't that vast? How could you say that? Because the majority of astronomers agree. No, they don't. The ones that matter do. The ones who gave you this job do. If you would take a look at the literature. Which I have, Mr. Shaw, which is where my finding is now quite at home. Then you would find, Miss Levitt, that there is simply no other way to think. Well, it's a good thing the universe doesn't care what you think. Or me, or Newton, or Kepler. It just marches on and waits for the blinds to catch up. That would be you. That would be you! Henrietta. I'm sorry, but I have to go. I always have to go. Henrietta, please. What? When I returned from Europe, my father decided that it was time, and that she was a good match, and I hardly knew what happened, and I hardly knew her, and I don't know why I acted that way. Yes, I do. Seeing you is very hard. I am so sorry that this has been so hard for you. That's not what I meant. Perhaps we could talk? We can't. Why? Because there's a boat that leaves tomorrow for Europe, and I just decided that I'll be on it. Because I've heard that seeing the stars from the sea is not to be missed. And I don't want to miss anything else. And apparently there's lobster. That's that's good for you, but wait, I need to say, I should say that your findings are very important, and I am very proud of you. Thank you. Dear Margie, 
Dear Mr. Shaw, I would like to say that I wish I could send you an image of this sky tonight. But I hope we never invent pictures that perfect. That would miss the point. Which is what? I think staring out to sea? I used to think that to be truly alive, I needed answers. I needed to know. But all this does not, in fact, need to be known, does it? We, we do. do. Because the real point is seeing something bigger and knowing we're a small part of it, if we're lucky. In the end, that is a life well lived. Please tell Miss Cannon when, we, when I get back. I have work to do. Because thank God there's a lot out there bigger than me. See you soon. Henrietta! Margie, I missed you so much. Welcome to Boston. And the same to you. Welcome back. Now tell me everything. Well, Paris is as perfect as you'd like to think. And London is just... Henry? Henry! I'm fine. You're not fine. What is this? It's nothing. It passes. It's not nothing. You should have come home immediately. There are only a few bad days. Henrietta, they've invented doctors. <laughs> Someone in London. And you see the other one right now. Margie, no. The luggage can wait. I'm going straight to Harvard. You're coming back to Wisconsin with me. You're resting. I'm going to work. I want to work. I don't care. There's time for all that. There's not. Wait now. There she is. Henry. Henrietta, there she is. That's what I said. I said that was her. Henrietta, dear. Oh my goodness, what are you doing here? But what are we doing here? Your sister told us you were finally coming back. And you have to save us from each other. Oh, you really do. <laughs> now, we have a mountain of work to get through. Hello, you. I'm Wilhelmina. I'm Margaret. Hello. Oh, this is my sister Margie. I thought you'd met. Not yet, but I've heard so much. You're the sister. We've heard of you. Oh my. You're scaring the poor thing, Annie. Oh, unfortunately common. Didn't Henrietta say you had a son? I do. He's as tall as his father and twice the charmer. Oh dear. Let's just say I do not fear a lack of grandchildren. Send him to me. I'll straighten him out. All right, ladies. The early graphs for Princeton are in, and we need your eyes on them. I can do that. Henry, wait. She was just saying she's been a bit poorly lately. I'm fine, and I'm so looking forward to being back. You're sick? No. Yes. She nearly fainted just now. She's not well. And I really must insist. I'm insisting, Margie. My work is here, and my life and every chance I've ever had is here. Then so am I. You can't get rid of me. Me neither. And you can work from home when you like, so there's not a single reason we can all go about our business as usual. Thank you, lunatic women. Here we go, darling. I'll get the bags. We've got you, Henry. We're right here. Excuse me, Miss Cannon? Not today, Mr. Shaw. I heard about Henrietta, Miss Lovett. I heard she's sick. How sick? How is she? Well, she's making do. Working from home just down the street. I think you know that nothing is going to keep her down for long. Nothing short of an earthquake? Sounds about right. Would you please give her this? I took the liberty of inquiring to a family physician, and he said he'd be happy to see her. I know she would never ask, but if you would tell her to please accept his services as a favor to me, I will. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. That's very... Thank you. We got the census today. I started to fill it out, but I didn't know what to put under your profession. Astronomer is my profession. All right. Astronomer. With a capital A. And how are we doing today? You know the worst part of this? Sitting still. For you, I'm sure it is. How's the pain? Not bad today. But relaxing bothers you. You can't order someone to relax and have it be relaxing. Would you like to read some news? I can't take any more war news. Did they send another astronomy circular? You'd think a world war would make the stars seem trivial. You'd think stars would make war seem trivial. 
I have never felt so helpless. You're not helpless. I write all these letters and no one answers. These men, colleagues, all using my work, but they won't let me near it. Useless, helpless. You're getting upset. Life is about getting appropriately upset. And all I want to know is what's true. What else is true? And how long is that list? And I know I won't know. And what does all the knowing of the not knowing do to a sane person? What does that mean? Maybe it means that we're all helpless and alone. And because you cannot connect everything yourself, then nothing's connected. Or maybe it means that you cannot know how you may matter to someone right now. And you may not know how you could matter to them in the future, but you're still connected. And you still matter, because what you do outlasts you sometimes. Am I helping or hurting? I can't tell, but thank you. And I want to explain. Oh, you've already tried explaining. I'm just too thick. Not stars. Something like souls. Henry. I just know that you worry about those things. And I don't want you to think that I don't believe in anything. I do, just a different kind of faith in grand observation. Which is comforting? Which is nimble, and that is comforting. My heaven is a cosmos deep in a gorgeous void. A void? Full darkness. Not all darkness. Modeled with immaculate combustion. But the stars are. Hot gas and a lonely, Not lonely. broad, airless. Not airless. Deep, vast, dark. Stop it. Just stop it. All right. I know we don't speak plainly about this, but where does my heaven go? Maybe it doesn't. Henry. I'm going first. I'll tell you who's right. You cannot say that. Not to me. I've made peace with that part. I haven't. And what other part is there? The part of meaning something. You mean everything to me. But you have your babies, your music, you like church. You can't compare us. You have a life. And you have a legacy. Work that I can't finish. That's what a legacy is. The way I see it, and this is just how I see it, you asked God a question, and he answered. Now that's the meaning to meaning for most of us. Now, relax before I drug you. <laughs> How about some mail? Fine. And messengers? Henrietta. Darling. Oh, Margaret, dear. Thank you again for keeping Henry so comfortable close by. To have her just blocks away with all these new girls and their temperaments and their outfits. Uh-huh. You not believe their shoes? Probably not. How are you feeling today? Fine, bored, angry. Not for long, you're not. Now, you ladies chat. I have dinner for us. You'll both stay, I insist. Wait now, you should hear this. Hear what? We have news. Great news. What news, Annie? Tell me. Head of Stellar Photometry. It's yours. Pickering sent me to make the offer. Oh my goodness! Henry! And a raise. Of a quarter! <laughs> <laughs> head of Photometry! But that's your job! Now I'm head curator. Everyone's moving up. Like mighty oaks. That's wonderful. Congratulations! It's a great honor, Henrietta. Like magma from the depths of men's minds, a nice, hot compliment erupts! <laughs> A change in the system is what it is. A model for the future. Oh, Lord. And if we use things like this and take a real stand... She's about to give you a pamphlet. We can make a larger difference. What's all this? We need a vote, girls. It's about equality. And, and it's, it's about, about time. I know all the slogans. Oh, I'm not really. If we can organize the sky, we can organize our minds to choose our own future. She heard a speech a year ago. Is this a democracy or isn't it? Now she's a patriot. A true patriot. Yes, I am. Does it say we the people or doesn't it? It does. It does. And we're marching D.C. next month. You should join us, both of you. I'll read the pamphlet. It's <laughs> a great pamphlet. Placed ham for dinner, I should get it ready. Thank you, Margie. Why don't I have a get in the way? 
So, we have new computers. You should come by the office. Trust me how much I wish I could. What can I do? I need more work. Anyone, whoever's working on this. I've been keeping up with the circulars. I've been writing everyone I can think of. I need to know what they're seeing. If I can't do the work myself, even the tiniest pinch of information, I'm fine with being tiny. I just need to know. Of course you do. I'll have some girls take time and investigate. Thank you. All I have is time, and all I haven't is time. Time is persistent. Yes. But light, its speed is a constant. One of the few in the universe. Just so you know, I choose to measure you in light. Hey, Amy. Hey, I need your help. Uh, what on earth? I'll go get your sister. Miss Levitt, hello! Mr. Shaw? I'm here, I know it's on, but I had to see you. Why? What's going on? There's a new finding, and I don't think I'm overstating it. It changes everything, and you had to be the first to know. Mr. Shaw, please tell me what you're talking about, and why you're here, and be aware that they're likely pressed ear to brain against that door. Well, I didn't know exactly where you live, so it starts with me following them. He followed us? <laughs> <laughs> what matters? What matters is that uh, this morning I received a, well, you received, but it all comes to my office now. What comes? Letters from colleagues to you. To me? I thought they were copied. They weren't! I've been trying to find out what's going on for ages! Sorry. Ages! <laughs> the point is, this morning Kurtzbrung, the Danish one? Big beer! Right. He used your work to measure distance to those Cepheids. My Cepheids? In the small Magellanic cloud, yes. He calibrated actual distance to my Cepheids? This could be the first measurement of anything outside our galaxy. Which means there are things outside our galaxy. Yes, proof that the universe is vast. How did he do it? He used statistical parallax for the zero point against the sun, then plugged in your data for the slope, and there you have it. That makes it sound so easy. But without your work, it was impossible. Your work made the leap for us all. Now we have a standard measurement for the rest of time with a standard. And another thing, another man keeps writing. Hudgens? Hudgens. Hubble? Hubble, yes. Oh, Peter, how far away are my stars? Thousands and thousands of light years away. Oh my god. Incredible. Which means our galaxy could be one of many. Perhaps one of many. Billions! I knew it! You did! You were perfectly wrong! I was! <laughs> <laughs> I am so proud to know you. And this was under your desk. A new girl found it. I thought you'd like it back. This is the book my father sent me. You never opened it? I was too busy. And then too ashamed, I think. Poems. Really? Wait a minute. My father sent me poems? This one's marked. When I heard the learned astronomer, when the proofs, the figures were arranged in columns before me, when I was shown the charts and diagrams with which to add, divide, and measure them, when I'm sitting, heard the astronomer where he lectured with much applause in the lecture room, how soon unaccountable I became tired and sick, till rising and gliding out I wandered off, by myself, in the mystical moist night air, and from time to time looked up in perfect silence to the stars. So he's not a marauder then. Wilhelmina had me worried. Margie, this is Mr. Peter Shaw. The Peter Shaw. A pleasure to meet you. You'll stay for dinner, I insist. Oh, I shouldn't. And yet you will. We have much to discuss, famous Mr. Shaw. And Margie is a wonderful musician. Maybe you and Annie can sing for us. Oh, yes. Oh, God. Margie knows musicals. <laughs> I wouldn't. You're singing. Wonderful. I've learned just not to argue with women. That's correct. Dinner is on the table. We'll 
be here in just a moment. And you must tell Will and Annie immediately. About what? Henry just became the first person to measure the universe. You knew about him. I did. You knew about him the whole time. I did. That many letters? Sisters are strange friends. What did he just tell me? It's true. I couldn't believe it. Of course he couldn't. Would you be nice to me? Henrietta was right. You were right. Look at this. Oh my goodness, look at this. That's what I said. Look at this. <laughs> the whole world should be looking at this. Henrietta. I know. This is, this is just. It's everything. It is everything. How do you celebrate measuring the universe? I have no idea. I have cookies. That's brilliant. <laughs> all right, come on, we're celebrating. We already are celebrating. Not enough, and you deserve it. Thank you all. That's right. perfect. Let's do it, let's do it right now. Do what right now? What are we doing right now? You're coming too. Me? Wait, what? No, I can't go anywhere. She's really not supposed to. You have to. You deserve this, Henrietta. It doesn't matter if I can't. It's not that far. Only a few blocks away. Just up the hill. It's freezing, I can't. Cannot go anywhere. So thank you, but let's just sit down, have a nice dinner. Leave the ham. Get in the car. Curfew blocks? Now we're talking. Margie. Henry. Relax. On top of a hill, just blocks away. Across the courtyard from my old desk where it stood off limits, I see the great refractor telescope to which we happily break in that night. And taking Margie's hand, I lean close, hold my breath, and see. My heaven! outside and look up in perfect silence and I know that distance is only space and time and for some of us light I am out of time but light has never let me down and so I shift a man named Hubble uses my work to prove that our most unique galaxy is in fact one of billions upon billions. Then a man from Sweden calls, wondering if I might like a Nobel Prize. It's too late for me, but I take the compliment. Another few years and Will dies in Boston, Annie by her side. Another year and another war takes over the world. Then Annie dies, then Peter, then my sister, kissed by 12 grandchildren, a symphony on the radio. Then we harness the atom, then orbit the earth, then stand on the moon. Then a telescope named Hubble, with wings set for space, shows us how vast and beautiful it all is because wonder will always get us there. Those of us who insist that there is much more beyond ourselves. And I do. And there's a reason we measure it all in light. <laughs> <laughs>